Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum and today we will be looking at gametogenesis. Gametogenesis. Okay, gametogenesis is uh, gotten from two words that we are coined together. So the two words are the gametes and genesis. The gamete simply means the productive cells. That is stem cells and the, the ova or the oocytes. These are the gametes and the genesis, which means the beginning. So, finding this way or joining this way together is how we get we got gametogenesis. So, in essence, gametogenesis is defined as the formation of the reproductive cells, the process of formation of the stem cell and the process of formation of the over or oocytes. That is what gametogenesis means. We will be looking at these two differently. That is the process of formation of the sperm cells and the process of formation of the ova. We will be looking at uh, these two formation differently. But let's start with the sperm cell formation, which is known as spermatogenesis. So spermatogenesis is defined as the process of formation of the stem cell, starting from the progenitor, which is the spermatogonium. And the process of spermatogenesis begins in the seminiferous tubules of the testes, and it begins during puberty, at the age of 11 to 16. So, the progenitor for the stem cell is known as spermatogonium. Type A is the progenitor for the sperm cell. So the spermatogonium type A undergo a mitotic division to give rise to spermatogonium type B and also some spermatogonium type A. So it undergo a detect mitotic division to give rise to spermatogonium type B and also some spermatogonium type A. Then the spermatogonium type B undergo the second mitotic division to give rise to the primary spermatocyte. So you can see the primary spermatocyte. And one thing you have to observe is that in all these uh, divisions, the number of chromosomes remains the same. If you notice from spermatogonium type A to spermatogonium type B to the primary spermatocyte, the number of chromosomes did not divide. It remained the same. It remained 46, and as you can see here. Then the primary spermatocytes now have to undergo the first meiotic division. So to give rise to the secondary spermatocytes. So it underwent the first meiotic division to divide into two two secondary spermatocytes. And now observe, here, the first mitotic division causes the division of the chromosome. You can see that the chromosomal number divides into two, making it 23, 23 chromosomes. So the secondary spermatocytes now have 23, each of them have 23 chromosomes. So it divides into two. Now, the secondary spermatocytes undergo the second meiotic division to give rise to the spermatids. It undergo the second meiotic division here to give rise to the spermatid. And now the chromosomal number did not divide again. It did not divide again. So you can see these four spermatids that the secondary spermatocyte give rise to. But there is no division in the number of chromosomes. It remains the same. Now, the spermatids undergo some series of changes in order to be transformed to the spermatozoa, which is the sperm cell. So, you can see the process of spermatogenesis. It is as simple as that. Now, you can see that the spermatids are round. They are rounded, but the spermatozoa are not rounded. You can see the shape. So, the series of change of the series of changes that the spermatids underwent 
in order to be transformed to the spermatozoa is known as spermiogenesis. Is known as spermiogenesis. Spermiogenesis is defined as the transformation of spermatids into the spermatozoa. So you remember I told us that the spermatid undergo some series of changes for it to be transformed into the uh, spermatozoa. So that series of changes and the transformation of the spermatids into the spermatozoa is known as spermiogenesis. Note the difference between spermatogenesis and the spermiogenesis. Why spermatogenesis is the complete formation of spermatozoa, starting from the progenitor. Spermiogenesis is the transformation of the spermatids into the spermatozoa. So, these are the series of changes that occur for spermatids to be transformed into the spermatozoa. So, this is a spermatid, and you can see that the spermatid is rounded, and the spermatid contains four cellular components, which are the nucleus, the Golgi complex, the central and the mitochondria. These four cellular components all take part in the uh, formation of the spermatid or in the transformation of the spermatid into the spermatozoa. So the nucleus becomes the head of the spermatozoa. This is the nucleus, it becomes the head of the spermatozoa. The Golgi complex becomes the acrosome overlying the head of the spermatozoa. Then the centrio divides into two and they come to lie at the center. They divide into two and they come to lie at the center. And the axial filament begins to grow out from the centrio. The, the axial filament begins to grow out from the centrio. And the one centrio come to lie at the close to the neck. One centrio come to lie close to the neck. Why the other one remain at the normal position of the central? And you notice that as the axial filament is going from the central down, the axial filament is also going in between the two central. It is also going in between the two central and it's going downward. Then the central that remains at the normal position of the central becomes the annulus. It becomes the annulus. Why the one that lies at the neck becomes the proxima central. So this is the proxima central and this is the annulus, which is the distal central, gives rise to the annulus. Then the mitochondria begin to come closer to they begin to come closer to the axial filaments here. They begin to come closer to the axial filament here and here. So these are the changes that occur, or the changes that occur for the spermatids to be transformed into the spermatozoa. This is the spermatozoa. Now let's compare the four cellular components. Now the acrosome. This is the acrosome, which was derived from the body complex. Remember our first diagram. Then the head, the derived from the nucleus. Then this is the proximal centrio. And this is the distal central that gives rise to the animals. If you compare it, you notice these changes. Then the axial filament that grew in between the plasma central and the animals, together with the mitochondria, becomes the middle piece. Now the axial filament that grew from the animals downward becomes the principal cell. Then you also notice the mitochondria that came close to the to the axial filaments that give rise to the middle piece. They become the mitochondria sheets. So this is the spermatozoa, which was gotten from the spermatids. So we'll be looking at the maturation and the capacitation of the spermatozoa. So maturation, you remember that when the spermatozoa is formed in the seminiferous tubules of the testes. It is not yet mature. It doesn't have the ability to move. That means it is not motile. 
and it also lacks the capacity or the ability to fertilize an ovum. So we'll be looking at maturation and capacitation of the spermatozoa. Now, but we'll be taking maturation first, then we'll be taking capacitation as the next one. So for the maturation, I told us that in the semi-inferior tubules where the spermatozoa is formed, it is not yet mature and it doesn't move. It is not yet motile. So some current fluid in the semi-inferior tubule carries the spermatozoa into the epididymis. It is indeed the epididymis that they are stored before ejaculation, and it is in the epididymis that it acquires maturation. Now, what happens before the spermatozoa acquires maturation? What happens is that they get the floating of the plasma membrane covering the spermatozoa. Some changes occur in the glycoprotein, and once these changes occur, the spermatozoa become mature and it also acquires some level of motility. But it acquires full motility when during the ejaculation, when it mixes with the secretion of the seminal vesicle and the prostrate gland. That is when it becomes fully really mature and it also acquires high motility. It can be able to move. Then coming to the capacitation, capacitation means the ability or the capacity of the spermatozoa to be able to penetrate and fertilize and open. So we'll be looking at what happens to the spermatozoa. Then it is mature, but it cannot uh, fertilize and open. So let's look at what happens before it has the ability to fertilize and open. This capacitation occurs in the female genital tract, that is the uterus and the fallopian tube or the uterine tube. So when the spermatozoa gets or finds its way into the uterus, some substances that are released by the uterus causes the spermatozoa to uh, develop capacity to be able to fertilize an ovum. The glycoprotein coats and the plasma protein covering the spermatozoa are altered. And once they are altered, the uh, spermatozoa, once it gets to the ovum, the glycoprotein and the plasma protein are altered. And once it gets to the ovum, the ectosome overlying the head of the sperm releases some substances. And those substances that it releases get to the zona pericida covering the ovum. And once it gets to the zona pericida covering the ovum, it digests the zona pericida, making the zona pericida to clear away and allowing the head of the sperm to be able to penetrate the ovum. This is what I mean. Let's assume that this is an ovum. And this is the zola, this is an ovum and this is the zola pericida overlying an ovum. So the zola pericida always cover the ovum. And the main function of the zola pericida is that it prevents penetration of Spermatozoa. So it covers the, so this is the zona pellucida. And this is the ovum. So this is the zona pellucida. You can see that the zona pellucida covers the ovum. And the zona pellucida prevents the ovum from getting fertilized. So what happens is that immediately the spermatozoa gets into the female genital tract. The female genital tract releases some substances that causes alteration in the glycoprotein coat and the plasma protein of the spermatozoa. And once this happens, the spermatozoa finds its way to the uterine tube where the ovum lies. Once it gets to the uterine tube, this is the spermatozoa, and you can see that the acrosome covers the spermatozoa. So, immediately the acrosome comes in contact with the zona pellucida that covers the ovum. The acrosome releases some enzyme known as lysosome. And the process by which the acrosome releases this enzyme is known as acrosomic reaction or acrosome reaction. Reaction. Then, this lysosome begin to digest the zona pellucida. 
you can see from our second diagram that the solar panels that have disappeared. And the process by which the solar panels that disappear is known as solar reaction. Reaction. So you can see here that the solar panels that have been digested and the acrosome also has been released, exposing the head of the sperm to the ovum. So this is what happened in the process of capacitation. So that is it. Then we come to the end of this teaching. In our next teaching, we will be looking at ogenesis. That is the process of the formation of the female reproductive cells, which is the ovum. We will be looking at it. So I would like you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Try as much as possible to like this video, also comment your question, share this video to your friends. Thank you very much.